Are you glad to be in God's house, man? That's the question. Yes. Hey, let's take a second because I don't think we, I don't think we can go on um, without taking a second to talk about um, something that's very special that's happening yeah. in our in our world right now, and in our, uh, we get to see it with our own eyes. And yes. obviously, I'm talking about everything that's happening over at Asbury College. Um, and the revival that is taking place. Can we can we just take a second? I want to give it up uh, from what I've read. That started with like four or five young people that yes. just decided that they were wanting more of God and yes. reminding themselves of who God was. And can we just give it up for yeah, them at first, uh, yeah. for their hearts to seek God with everything they have? And, and then I also just want to take a second and give it up for our God because I do yeah. believe that God's getting ready to pour out his spirit <laughs> yes, upon the yes. earth. Uh, more than we've ever seen. And I believe we get the luxury and the privilege of being able to yeah, see that. There's a lot of junk going on in our world. I would use another word that starts, I'll just say it, there's a lot of crap going on in our yeah. world. And um, I, I'm just very thankful that we serve a God yes. that's going to remind us all very quickly of who he is. Yes. And I love that he doesn't do that with a heavy hammer, but he does it just by when people show up and make themselves available, lives are changing, worlds are changed. That's right. So I just want to encourage you. John, can we have revival here? Um, I want to encourage you that the same God that is in Asbury College is the same God that's here this morning. Yes. And what, what, what God's looking for mm-hmm. when it comes to revival is someone who just says, God, I want a new awareness of who you are in my life. Yes. I want to be reminded of who you are, either yes. for the first time or I want to be reminded again of who you are and what you're capable of. Because the truth of the matter is, is when we show up with a heart that's available for what God can do, yep. when we show up with a full heart of expectancy of what God can do and what God yeah. will do in our nation and in our world and even more so in our own lives, come on, somebody. Mm-hmm. I believe that revival starts right there. Yes. I'm going to pray, and I'm just going to believe God that what's happening in Asbury, stays, it stays pure. It, I, I love how things start. But I hate it when man gets a hold of it and messes it up. Everybody with me? So I'm going to pray for it to stay pure, and I'm going to stay for it to impact as many lives as it possibly can. And I'm going to—we're going to pray that it impacts as many places in our nation and around the world that it possibly can. Are you with me in this place? Is this okay that we take one second? Okay, dear Father, we love you. We thank you for today. We thank you for. Man, even the songs that we've already sung and just the reminder of your faithfulness in our lives, we thank you for, I thank you for young people, Father, uh, just in this situation, having the courage in a world where I'm sure uh, it's even harder to have courage at their age now than it's probably ever been. And I just thank you for young people who are willing to set their time down, to set their pride down, to set their way of doing things, to set the, uh, the way the world is screaming in their face to do things and where they just say, God, I'm coming to you with a humble heart. And Father, whatever you want to do, we're inviting you to do it. And God, that's my prayer as we move forward as a church, that Father, whatever you want to do, you do it. We soften our hearts. We say, God, if there's anything that we need to repent of, in other words, we just need to change the way we're doing it and get more uh, focused on doing it your way. Father, let that be something that we do and we lead the way as a church with setting up the atmosphere for you to do what only you can do. God, we worship you and we love you. It's in your awesome name we pray. Can we all please give God a big amen on that one? All right, all right. So going from revival to sex, that's what we're talking about today. And I don't think there's any better way for revival to start in your marriage than a great sex life. Come on, somebody. Uh, that's, not in our, that's not in our notes. It but, is not. Please but follow the notes. I'm supposed to follow the notes. <laughs> So you say, did you show up on the right Sunday? If you're married, I believe you showed up yes. on a great Sunday. And I'm just going to tell you, here at this church, we talk about things that most won't. We talk about things that um, probably you won't hear from the stage very often. Um, but I just tell you that um, the things that we hear um, a lot when we're meeting with couples, younger couples, mm-hmm. Couples who've been married for a little bit, couples who are recently, whatever it may be, yeah. these are the topics we hear about. We hear about communication. We hear about having a good vision for, yes. for your life. And we also hear about uh, the idea of sex. Yeah. But it's more than just sex today, babe. It's more than sex, correct. What are we talking about? You're not following the notes. So what am I, I supposed to say? <laughs> We're Why don't just, you talk to us about some things? Are we just going for are, it? You want me to just read? You know me. I'm not going to follow <laughs> I know, scripts. I'm, so I'm no. usually pretty good at following. No, we have. We've talked about a number of things over the last several weeks, and I want to encourage you. If you haven't been here or you're looking to find out some more things about marriage and maybe some help, check out the past few messages that we've done. We've talked about vision and, and how it brings unity and direction in our lives. And 
what I want to encourage you with today is whether you're married or not, or you want to be married, or you're a young person in here, what is so cool about God is his word is applicable so no matter it's what. So his word applies to our life. It's and so, so don't tune us out because you think, oh, that's, this is not for me. God can speak to your heart Absolutely. this morning Absolutely. wherever you are, and I believe he's going to do that. And we're going to continue in this series talking about sex and romance. Yeah, so today we, we're talking about a topic that is near and dear to all of our hearts. And don't tell me it's not because we spend a lot of money yeah. going to watch movies that yeah. all are about romance. We spend a lot of time uh, listening to songs that are all about romance. Yeah. Uh, we watch shows on TV that are all <laughs> about romance and that is what we're going to land on today is romance and I don't know if you're like me maybe it's because I'm just uh, maybe a guy maybe some of the guys can identify with me and here with this that um, forever a long time in our marriage which is probably one of the reasons why we had so much of a challenge in this area is that I would like put things into categories like like I'm, 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 a, I'm a pastor like that's one category and then like I'm a parent that's another category I'm a husband that's another category um, I have hobbies you have hobbies yes. that's another category and then when it was time to be Mr. Romance, then I would step in to like Mr. Romance categories. Any of the other men out there like me where you're like, oh, all of a sudden I yeah. can flip a switch and it's, it's Mr. Romance time, you know, <laughs> like, like that's what I thought. But it's, it's so much more than that. So why don't you kind of let us know what that is? I think the reality is it, is it isn't just a separate category. It's not something that we just turn on and turn off. Romance really is an environment. It's an atmosphere that we create in our homes, in our relationships. And it's so important. Just think about like a smell, an aroma. We're talking about an aroma of romance. Come on. An aroma, good. a smell. I mean, you can walk in good or bad to something taking up the space of where you are and it either smells good or it smells bad. Yeah. And I believe it's the same in our in our marriage relationship when it comes to romance. It, it, it takes up, it really is an atmosphere, an environment Absolutely. Where it fills every and permeates every area of our life, not just the bedroom. So it's aroma, but we're talking about a romance. A romance. You're pretty clever, but yeah, we can romance. find this in Second Corinthians two fifteen through sixteen. Just yep. so you know, we have verses for everything we're going to be talking about today. But for we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To the one. We are an aroma that brings death to the other, an aroma that brings life, and who is equal to such a task? For, for the part I want to focus on right there is the aroma that we send towards heaven. Do you know that yeah. the way you live your life actually sends a, 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 an aroma? It sends yeah. a smell to your heavenly Father. I know that's a little weird, but I want us to think about yeah. that, that the way that we're living our lives... It, 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 it matters to our Heavenly Father, and it, and it sends an aroma up to heaven of how we live. But more importantly, because of Jesus living in our heart and in our lives, um, it actually impacts the world around us as well, because yeah. we actually send an aroma, Scripture talks about, to fellow believers, fellow believers who are maybe struggling in an area, f area fellow believers who are maybe struggling with addiction or yeah. whatever it may be, or maybe struggling in their marriage, that our marriage can actually send a, a, a good aroma to them, but it can also do the opposite. Yeah. It can send a bad aroma to them, but the idea that aroma is something um, that we have in our lives that God uses is is a big deal. And I'm not talking about necessarily your hygiene, although no. that can send an aroma as well. Yes. But just the aroma that, that has the impact on people's lives, whether we know it or not, it, yeah. it truly, truly does. Because smells are par powerful. I mean, they really are. And we've learned, you know, we've been married only 19 years married. Come on, somebody. In August. <laughs> that romance has an aroma to it. And there's actually a recipe that God created for us to follow when it comes to romance in our life. There's a, a right aroma with the right recipe that God gives us. And just like any recipe, think about when you're cooking, right? It takes effort. It takes us doing the right things. Come on. And it's possible for us to have the right aroma, the right romance in our marriage relationship. We just have to to work on it yeah. and sex and romance unfortunately babe are not the same thing shoot they're not the same thing 
How many, how many, how many thought change. those were the same thing? I would have thought, and, and especially in our younger years of marriage, yes. that, that our romance life was our sex life. Yes. And, and I think one can lead to the other. Good. Thank God. <laughs> My kids are not in here today. They're very thankful. They're they were so glad they're serving serving, for a service. serving this service. But it can lead to another, and that's good because yep. what we're saying is that um, sex – is is not necessarily romance, but all yeah. st- but the, the actual idea yeah. that a romantic aroma can lead to great sex. Yes, and so we, we're going to focus on some sex stuff this morning, but really mm-hmm. we're going to get more about the idea of what it looks like to have the right aroma for your romance. Yeah. Does that sound good? And the first thing we have to realize, and we have to do just like any recipe, this is a recipe for romance. And so when you have a recipe and you're trying to cook something to make a great aroma, then you have to follow the recipe. Come on. You have to follow the recipe. That's the first thing you have to do. You have to follow the recipe. And like I said, God gives us the recipe to follow. Baby, that so reminds me, I'm sorry, but that so reminds me of a story where uh, we we had just moved to St. Louis from Australia. We got to live in Australia for a little bit because uh, uh, we went to school over there. And we get home, and my baby found a job before I did. And if you're like, oh, he's lazy, had nothing to do with me being lazy. I had two kids at home. I tried to be a stay-at-home dad for like two months, Todd, and, and about a month in, I'm like, I'm going to kill these kids. I will pay you to let me work for you. I will pay yes. to let me work for you. So that only lasted. But in that couple of months, I was watching a whole lot of TV. And uh, what's the BAM guy? BAM! That guy, cooking guy. What's his name? Emerald or whatever? Emerald. So I was watching him, and he's showing these pork chops. I'm like, I am going to lay it out for my beautiful wife before she gets home. I'm going to make these pork chops. It's going to be amazing. She actually invited her sister and brother-in-law that lived in the apartment above us over. And I'm even more excited. I'm like, they're going to taste and smell the best food they've ever had in their life. But the thing is, is I messed up the recipe because I put, uh, it was supposed to be just, uh, I soaked it in vinegar oil. I do remember that. The whole house Y'all. smelt like vinegar. vinegar. And uh, we're Soaks sitting there eating it. Vinegar. Everybody's trying to eat it. The mashed potatoes were soaked in vinegar Marinated oil. in vinegar. And everything was vinegar oil. I know, I'm stupid. I've already told you that. I didn't know why I did it. I just did it. But vinegar oil and the aroma itself was enough to knock you over. It smelled like Long John Silver (laughs) up in our house. (laughs) Oh, it was horrible. It was bad. It was bad. It stunk. But so, but the truth is, though, is that Mm -hmm. I messed up the recipe. Yeah. Because I added something that wasn't supposed to be there. And that's, I think that's pretty important for us as we joke. I think it is pretty mm-hmm. important for us to talk about that and the romance between you and your, your, your spouse, that the idea that we send off an aroma, and it's really important that we're putting in the right things yeah. for the recipe and not putting in the oh. things that shouldn't be there. Yeah, and I just want to give us another verse kind of as a starting point to really help us understand and maybe even prepare, soften our hearts for this right recipe that we've got to follow. It's in 1 Corinthians 7, verses 3 and 4. It says, The husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife, and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but yields it to his wife. That's really, really, really good, because I think a lot of us need to understand um, that a great romance um, mm-hmm. starts in the head before it starts in the pants. Yep. And, I, and I say that not jokingly. I say that to make That's a valid, true. really, really solid point. Mm-hmm. Because romance starts up before it starts down. Yep. It starts with us understanding what God's word says about it. Yes. And how God has asked us as husband and wife yeah. to serve each other. Yes. And that's what that verse tells me. Mm-hmm. Is not that I'm over Brittany or that Brittany's over me, but that when we come together as one, which is yeah. how God designed marriage, that we come together as one, that we are there to serve one yes. another. Come on, somebody. Yes. Not for our own needs, but for the needs of the other person. Yeah, and I think it's important for us to, to be communicating, like we talked about last week, be communicating about what each other's needs are. And we've had to have a lot of serious and even hard conversations about communicating those needs to each other and being able to 
to go over what our expectations are. Absolutely. So what we thought, I always learn from what not to do better than I do from what to do. Is anybody like me? Yes. Like, I, I learned the hard way. I don't know yes. why. That's just the kind of guy that I am. I learn the hard way. And so we're going to give you, some of these, <laughs> they're, they're, they're going to be kind of funny, but at the same time, uh, there's going to be some serious ones. All yep. of them are actually serious. We're <laughs> just trying true. to make them as as lighthearted as we possibly can yes. and we put some names to them and if you find your name in one of these it's probably because we were thinking about you this week <laughs> when we put this no, in no that but, is not true <laughs> but the first couple and they put the wrong ingredient in yeah. way too much is rick and Rhonda rude these rick, are the recipe wreckers recipe wreckers is rick and Rhonda. rick and Rhonda rude, rude. Uh, i learned at a very young time age in our marriage that um, it was pretty rude of me I thought it would maybe maybe get Brittany in the mood a little bit more but um, you know when I would say or do rude things to my wife that I thought um, were good but she did not like at all for example if I would like smack her on her backside and I would say uh, hey baby it's about to go down like she would be like <laughs> It's rude, right? It was rude. I'm just being straight. Can we be straight in here? Can we talk about some stuff? Like, yes. like this is what you deal with in your everyday marriage. Yes. So we're gonna yes. we're gonna be lighthearted, but we're also gonna be very serious. Yeah. But it was a True. dumb move for me. Yeah, like it, it was. did not get you in the mood. No, not at all. Yeah. And ladies, I think it's true too. Too, like you know, he's gonna be vulnerable. I am too. I think we can be rude. I think, ladies, I think we can be demeaning. I think we can be like, n like when they maybe ask or want to have sex, we can be like. No, like, what were you thinking? Never. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I said that a few times. Yeah. After, um, I, after I said my comment, you probably yes. did. So. But, ladies, we can be rude as well, and just our tone and our approach um, to this this topic especially. Come on, and then how about Al and Abby Average? <laughs> Al and Abby Average. Do you know that 1.2 times a week is the average amount of of sex that Mary's couple, married couples have. What's the point to? Like, how, oh, no. does, how does that work? I don't know <laughs> how that works. Somebody can explain that, but you can go look this up if you want. The Google told me this, and I believe it. 1.2 times yeah. a week it's weird. is what most, the yeah. average uh, that most people have, married couples have sex. I know. We've been there. Oh, yeah. Probably less than that. I was going to say, le we've been less than average Absolutely. at times. And I think, you know, we, I mean, I remember making comments like, when was the last time we had sex? Yeah. Like, and who I'm knows? Like, you forgot that? Like, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, but no, seriously, but yeah. it was a thing where we would ask ourselves that question, mm -hmm. and that's far too long. Yes. That's yes. like, that's far too long. We do not want to be Al and Abby average. No, and we're not no, anymore. We're not. No, we're like 1.8. No, I'm totally <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Okay, moving right along to the third recipe wrecker. Hey, can I just, do you hey. know how much courage it takes up me for me to stand up here hey. with this man hey. and talk about this listen, topic? Listen, just, just just on a for real, for real note, we would we would have not been able to do this oh seven gosh, or eight no, years this ago. This is a miracle. She, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's funny, but it's the not, reason no why joke. we're comfortable doing this. And the reason why we'll talk about some of this yeah. stuff is because this is the real. Yes. This is what married couples face on a regular yes. basis. Yep. So we're going we're gonna to give you scripture to back yep. up why sex is important. Yep. We're going to give you scripture to back up why communication is important. Yes. Why these things are extremely important. We wonder yep. why so many people are going through divorce or have been through divorce. And again, yep. I said it first week or second week if you have been through a divorce there's no shame no no, no condemnation here no. but but my hope and our prayer and our hope mm -hmm. is that the stuff we're talking about helps that never happen again yes yes and i'm not i'm telling you it's not these huge things that mm -hmm. that lead to divorce it may get there but it's these small yeah. foxes like we talked about last week that if we don't deal with them yeah. they catch up with us folks and that's why we're we're willing to talk about some stuff that yeah. may be a little uncomfortable but it's it's, it's we've learned we've learned mm -hmm. the hard way yeah come on yeah right i about to say come on somebody <laughs> just me okay the third the third recipe wrecker ted and tina Tired. Oh man, these guys! Come on, Ted and Tina tired are gonna wreck a recipe. Yeah, they're gonna. They, they, Ted and Tina have wrecked us a lot. Yes, I'm just where, so tired. Where one of us have have <laughs> put forth more effort, like in the romance department yes. of of trying to serve the other one, maybe that day a little better or that week yeah. a little better, and nothing is worse than when you have.
have put forth that extra effort. Come on, man. <laughs> Nothing is worse when you put forth that extra effort. You go to bed. You think, oh, man, it's about Tonight's to go down, and she's already asleep. Come on. Now, I mean, that is <laughs> one of the worst. So Ted and Tina will get you. But how about and Tina. Tom and Tammy technology? Ooh. Tom and Tammy technology. Do you know that 43% of married couples take technology to bed. Wow. Don't do it. And I can I speak to that? Yes. Because she has she has taken steps not to do that. I have not yet. She has taken steps where she does not bring her phone back to bed. At nine o'clock, nine thirty, mm -hmm. somewhere around in there, her phone is in the ki kitchen, it's on the charger. Along and with all of our children. Yes, along with all the ch our kids' phone. And just so you know, um, you can make a statement with your kids that our phones are getting put on the counter uh, at this time, and they need to honor that yeah. under your house. And our kids do, and we explain to them why. Uh, but, yeah, I would encourage you to do that. I have not done that yet, um, mostly because um, – I'm, I'm prepped, and I'm prepping myself for if you text me, I want to be there oh at the gosh. drop of a hat. No, I'd like to tell you that that's it, but more than that, it's because I'm scrolling social media or I'm checking out my Cardinals website or whatever mm. it may be. But can I just tell you that technology can yeah. kill the yep. marriage bed, like kill That needs to be a safe space bed. for sure. It definitely needs to be. Oh, my next one is my favorite. <laughs> See if you guys know these people. Have you ever heard? They're, they're an amazing couple. Yes. Uh, Steve and Sharon sweatshirts. Have you ever heard of Steve? <laughs> Steve and Come Sharon. Come on. Can we be real? Can we talk oh with you about gosh. something? Oh, my gosh. Like, I, I think it's imp <laughs> important for us to remind ourselves of how much effort we made <laughs> trying to get our spouse in the first place. Because I think we get really comfortable, which is fine. Yeah, but I think we can get really comfortable, like, oh, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, I'll just go to bed however I want to look, no big deal. And I, I just want to challenge our hearts and our thinking with that a little bit because, men, if you're like me, um, like, you got to get new underwear. Like, you got to get new <laughs> underwear. And not because, this is not in my notes, but this is what I thought of. Not because, <laughs> not because there's, there's, there's the wrong, like, stain in them, but they're, they're old, there's holes. It's not good. Nobody wants to look at that. No, I'm being serious. Like, you got, like, it matters what you go to yes, bed in. Yes. Like, I really do believe this. Like, I think yes. this is a big thing that we hear. You guys yes. think this is just us? We hear these conversations. Like, she won't dress up for me. He, he mm -hmm. comes to bed smelling like whatever, mm -hmm. like work or what. And, guys, I'm just, these are things that the yes. enemy will use, I promise you, yes. to get into your marriage. Has anybody else dealt with any of these things so far? You're like, yes. I'm not raising my hand, even if I know. <laughs> so, babe, talk about, like, because I do think it, like, talk about your, like, what we've, <laughs> no, for real, like, yes. what we've, because you would come with, like, jumbo size <laughs> pants that you had from, like, your first boyfriend. She wore sweatpants when we first got married that she had from her for, first boyfriend. Guys, I'm they were so you, comfortable. Because they were so comfortable. <laughs> they were the most comfortable pair of sweatpants and she would, ever. She would wear, like, these big, huge sweatshirts, and none of it matched, and like, yes. Just talk, no, for real, like, talk yes. about what we talked so, about and agreed upon. Like, yeah, so, like, things. matching sweatsuits are okay, but no sweatpants to bed. Sweatshirts are okay, yeah. and absolutely no socks. No stinking <laughs> socks, man. No socks. No socks. I want to no feel socks. your feet. You're the only feet that I want to feel, baby, yes. just so you know. We had to come to an agreement. Uh, how about, uh, hey, how about this one? This is a little bit recipe more serious. Recipe record. This is a huge recipe record. Yeah. It's Pat and Patricia Porn. Yep. Yep. Come on. Pat and Patricia porn. Yep. Um, I don't think there's a worse aroma that we can bring mm -hmm. into our bed to ruin the recipe yes. and give the foulest smell yep. than trying to bring porn into our marriage bed. Yep. Um, I think we do that as couples. Yeah. I, I, I do. I think there's couples that maybe are even in this room that – uh, have have come up with the idea that that maybe uh, I don't know brings some excitement, yeah. um, yep. gets them in the mood, whatever it may be. Um, but I'm just telling you something right now, like, and you don't hear me use this word very often, but porn uh, is demonic, mm -hmm. and porn will bring a spirit not just on yourself but on your life yes. that I'm promising you 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 don't want to open the door for. Take it from a guy who struggled with pornography for for two decades. Yeah and open the doors that I should have never opened. It almost, you know, like it, it almost ruined not just my marriage, but my life. Yeah. And when, when you put porn 
into the mix. Well, my wife, uh, I used to make this same excuse. Uh, there was a time where Brittany was having some personal problems, and it was hard for us to be intimate with each other and have sex with each other. Um, so I would, I had gotten this idea in my head that, oh, I'll just please myself with this. Like, mm -hmm. I'll, if she's not able to, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of myself this way. Mm -hmm. And I'm just telling you that that is another door the enemy uses. Yeah. That's not, that's not um, what, what needs to happen. That is not what fixes no. um, a marriage that's struggling with their sexual life. But um, we also need to understand that pornography and the way that the world yes. has viewed sex has given this idea that sex is an ugly thing, that sex mm -hmm. is, a, is a thing that we shouldn't talk about, that sex is a thing that mm -hmm. um, shouldn't be brought up, especially in church, where God designed yes, sex. God designed uh, yeah. sex within the context of marriage. It's actually something really beautiful. Go read yes. like Song of Solomon. Like you want to yeah. you want to read some stuff uh, and and find out what, what God's okay with yeah. when it comes to sex. Go read that because you're going to find out real quickly that he's okay with the idea of sex. But maybe give him the the, the break. Yeah, I love this like this acrostic that helps us understand sex cuz I think it, it it can bring a negative connotation. So the S stands for supernatural. Sex really is a supernatural gift from God. And the E is that it can be exciting and enjoyable. Yeah. It doesn't have to be exhausting and, like, bad. And the X is that it's not X-rated. It's God-created. Come on, somebody. It is God-created. And culture has hijacked yeah. the idea of sex. It has hijacked the idea of sex, and God gave us the gift of sex. Love it. it is a gift from God himself. It's amazing. It's not gross. It's an amazing gift. It is. It is. It's not, it's not gross. It's supernatural. It can be exciting and enjoyable. And it's not this X-rated version that we see on the screens. It is God created Come and a on, gift. Man. Can we get an amen it. from that? That's a good word, dude. Um, what about the next one? Because oh, this, yeah. one, this, one's, this one, oh man. Come on. One. Matt and Mary monotonous. Anybody met them? Matt, Matt and Mary Matt monotonous. And Mary. We got new people here today. Man, I, I know. promise you we don't talk about sex I love every it. week. It's every other week that every we talk other. about it. I think, though, that this really can impact our, our sex life in a big way. We just become monotonous and boring. Yeah. I boring. Would, I would go back to um, the things that we used to do, yeah. even when we first got married, yep. to set the mood, um, <laughs> to create the atmosphere, um, to, to prep each other yeah. uh, for for what was getting ready to go down and <laughs> no but i'm serious but the, the truth is though is that the older we got yeah. the more we went through marriage the less and less we did that yep. and it became really monotonous and i'm going to say some things here that like i'm sure you're probably going to laugh because it's it's some of this stuff is you don't hear a lot about again in church but mm -hmm. it's the truth like uh, i think even as as christians we can believe like oh we only have one position we can mm -hmm. do it um, and if we get outside of that, then we're, we're, we're getting filthy and it's not no, God approved. And I'm just so telling you again, freedom. go read scripture. There's a lot of things and we're going to, we're going to help you out even with some of the marriage groups that we're having. Yeah. And we're going to share some more on this. And, um, but I, I just even think about the idea of us not getting monotonous, um, mm -hmm. when it comes to, um, just yeah. <laughs> experimenting, uh, with, with different things yep. uh, in our bedroom. So. Yes. And not, and not being, I remember, you know, just like I think on the front end of things, you can be super spontaneous and adventurous, and then over time it just becomes thing. But what about if someone has been forced maybe to do some things in a past relationship yeah. or, um, yeah, maybe even uncomfortable with yeah. certain things? So that happened in our marriage that Brittany, um, some of the previous relationships that she was in and even a couple of things that happened to her when she was a little girl, mm -hmm. um, you know, it made some of the stuff that I was asking her to do very uncomfortable and uh, brought up a lot of triggers of a lot mm -hmm. of hurt and pain. But see, I didn't realize that until we started communicating that. Yeah. I just thought she didn't want to because I was doing something wrong or yeah. um, whatever it may be. But once I started to discover yeah. uh, that my beautiful wife had, had had some past trauma because of that, it started to shift my heart on yeah. the importance of me getting what I wanted. Does that make yep. sense? So I think that there's things that as a spouse, whether it be the husband or the wife, where yep. you are, um, there's there's things that you may be wanting to others wanting to do, but it brings up too much uh, yeah. past triggers and trauma. But I would also say that there was things that um, 
that was the case in, yeah. but you trusting, first off, God and trusting mm -hmm. me as I continued to get healthy in some things yep. um, that you opened your heart to and you started to realize a godly way of those things yes. being in the bedroom. Yep. So, um, but it came down to great communication. Yes, we had to communicate about those needs, those expectations, the triggers, the things that were hard. And I'm, yeah, thankful that we've done that. And then you got Ned and Nancy No. Ned oh, and Nancy come on. No. This They're was, a recipe wrecker. Yeah. Ned and Nancy No are recipe wreckers. I think, you know, saying no all the time, and I'm going to speak to the ladies because I am a lady, is not okay. I used to be Nancy No. And I think we've got to know our no's. Yeah. Because ultimately, there would be times and seasons where I was using my no to get back at, to deprive, to do the things that the Bible tells me not to do. Yeah. I think we have to know our no's. Why are we saying no? And I think it's super important for us to communicate why we're saying no and to have a follow-up appointment. If I'm going to say no now, well, then there's going to be an appointment. Hey, maybe not Come right on. now, but there later. Was, there, was a, there was a season that Britt wanted to put on the schedule our, our during the week when we were having sex. I'm just going to be straight. I didn't like the idea. I thought I was Mr. Romance. I'm like, hey, it's spontaneous. <laughs> like, we got to keep it that way. But through counseling and through a lot of, yep. of help, we, we realized that that was something that we probably was a good idea for us that we needed to do. So we had Sunday fun day and then, like, Thursday, <laughs> I don't know, whatever Thursday was. But, but. It was whole, Tuesday. But my whole point is that. It was that Tuesday. I hated it at first. And we don't do that anymore. We don't do that anymore. But. It, it helped set up a better routine for us yes. in, in our marriage where we knew that neither one of us were going to tell each other no um, on those days yeah. unless, you know, there was something healthy. But 1 Corinthians 7, 5, just so you know, we even have yeah. verse for this. It says, do not deprive each other except perhaps by mutual consent, which we have had. When I was yep. going through all my addiction of sexual stuff, um, there was a time and a season where we both agreed that we weren't going to have sex for this amount of time yep. uh, so that you may devote yourselves to prayer, then come together so that Satan will not tempt yes. you because of your lack of self-control. So we're even yeah. being encouraged in Scripture yeah. that, it, that, that sex in marriage um, is important yeah. just to help us fight against temptation yes. and fight against not having the self-control that, that we think, would need. And I think one thing real quick, I, did, I know we're getting close to the end, but I want to just make it known that like we get asked a lot, maybe not a lot, but in marital like frequency, like how much. I don't, there's no number, but you have to regular, you, it has to be regular and it has to be consistent. It's good. You got to you got to be regular and it's got to be consistent and you've got to communicate what that looks like in the so context good. of your relationship. And here's the the second thing, the rest of these are really quick, but yeah. you need to check the chimp, the, the temperature. Here's the All next the, thing yeah. that you need to do for for the recipe for, for romance is you need to check the temperature. Yeah, I think checking the temperature just means like okay, what's going on on the inside of me? Think about checking the temperature of something that's cooking. You got to kind of go back and make sure that it's cooking appropriately. We've got to do that in our marriage relationship as well. We've got to check the temperature of our heart yeah. and our, our thoughts and yeah. make sure that we're... we're and, our, and, and check the temperature of our relationship with yes. Jesus because the fact yes. of the matter is, is if we're not hot for Jesus, we're not going to be hot for our spouse. Yeah. We have to be hot for him first. That yeah. is where the love, uh, the affection, the romance yes. really will come from is when we are hot for him yeah. and go on regular date nights to check those temperatures. Yes. Uh, we, we are getting back walk. to not a, well, a walk. We don't, I don't know. She can call me on her walk, but um, <laughs> just keep checking the temp temperature. And then here's the third thing that you need to do for the recipes. You need to clean out the pantry. Oh, you yeah. got to clean out the Come pantry. On. Yes. Go ahead, Follow the recipe, check the temperature and clean out the pantry. Come on. How many of y'all's pantry is a mess? You've got old stale chips, <laughs> maybe old boxes of crackers. You've got to do the same in your marriage relationship. You've got to clean out the pantry, old ways of thinking. You've got to clean out the stale behavior of maybe how you've been doing it, expired thoughts of what you think or thought this you know, should look like. You've got to clean out the pantry. And then the that last one is you need to enjoy the meal. Yes. And I'm not talking about sex, guys. Enjoy the meal. You need to enjoy the meal. We need to find something, yes. something that we enjoy doing together. Yes. And again, I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about something mm -hmm. that her and I enjoy spending our time doing outside of even God's house. Yep. Uh, because we're together every day. 
Um, so we really have to fight to find mm -hmm. something because we're, we're, we're so together all the time. But yep. tell them about, like, just real quickly, and we'll, we'll close. Yeah, like, one of the things we love to do is just be, like, our kids are involved in sports, and it's something that we've connected over because we both love it. We both love being courtside and being on the sidelines watching them and having the time together where we're not talking about church. We're not talking about what we're doing. You know, we're talking, just hanging out with each other. And it's so important because that does provide an aroma of room. When we're connecting and we're doing something together outside of the bedroom and the relationship, and I just want to say that, you know, our marriage relationships are so important that we protect, that we do these things, that we follow the recipe, that we check the temperature, that we make sure that we're cleaning things out and enjoying what God has given us. Like I said, sex is a gift. Marriage is a gift. It is the only relationship in scripture that God likens to his relationship with his son, Jesus. Y'all, that's why God is so, that is why he talks and takes marriage between a man and a woman so serious. Because it exemplifies who he is. It gives us the opportunity to reflect Jesus in our relationship. Yeah. I'm not married to glorify John. John's not married to glorify me. We are married as one to glorify our Come Father on, in heaven and represent Jesus to the people in our life. It is so important that we do this in a way that honors God and reflects him and we have the right recipe. He's given us scripture to follow to make sure that aroma fills it. in a good way. Hey, did this help anybody? Are you glad that you came to church today? I know it probably was not what you thought you were coming into. But I want to finish by saying, let's, it's uncomfortable and it's, it's sometimes a little weird to talk about guys because of what the world has done to sex yes not what god did what the world did i think god's heart is actually captured when we'll take a moment and yeah. talk about this and remind ourselves of what sex was designed for in the first place yeah. how marriage was designed in the first place yeah. come on somebody if you need help in this area at all because again we just touched on things I would encourage you to seek counsel Brittany and I are not counselors we will never claim to be counselors we can give you biblical counsel but the thing that helped our marriage the most was godly counsel yes. that we searched for yeah. and we went through two or three before we said this is the one yeah. so my encouragement is if you're struggling in that area first to get on your knees and ask God for help Second would be to get out and find somebody to help you discover a better way to approach sex in your marriage. Yeah.